Hi, Gloria Leibecker here with Healing You. Today I want to explore with you what happens when we don't feel safe. Have you had that experience before? I know I have. In all new situations that we find ourselves in, be it a place or a person, if there's something new in your environment, then your sensory organs automatically, immediately begin observing your environment to determine whether or not you're safe. And it, it, it does this very quickly to determine if I'm safe, I can stay and I can engage. And if it's not safe, I'm gonna get out quick. So depending upon what your life experiences have been, it's really going to inform your sensory organs. Our body is an incredible, incredible complex system. And our body is able to, to track all the complexity that we experience in our life. It does so much beneath our conscious awareness. Do you remember when you were younger, maybe you got to learn how to ride a bicycle. Well, at first, you probably had a few spills. You had to learn how to keep your balance. There's the complexity of steering as well as pedaling and getting your momentum and maintaining that momentum, maintaining the balance. There was a lot of complexity. And as you repeatedly practiced this, your body got to know what to anticipate. And it developed its capacity to maintain your balance and to know what to do next, especially if something unexpected happened. You learn how to break, you learn how to speed up, you learn how to coast, and it can be a lot of fun. Well, that's pretty much what it can be like for our lives as well. Yet, what if our life we had experiences that were painful, that really didn't feel safe, or maybe were not safe for us. And some of us don't even remember what may have happened in our life. We just know that if there's a certain tone of voice, or if there's a certain body posture, if there's a certain number of people in the room there, there could be many different ways that our body is going to then identify that it's very similar to an experience when we weren't safe. And it will begin the automatic process of releasing electrical signals and neurochemicals in our body in order to protect us. Our body is doing its best to take care of us so that we can survive and hopefully thrive in our life. Um, this, our sensory organs doing all this for us. There's a, a researcher, Stephen Porges, neuroscientist, and he is the one that coined the phrase, the neuroception of safety. And what that does is it, it lets us know that at a neuron level, when our body feels safe, we just can feel it and we can relax. And then our face really relaxes and and we're able to um, breathe deeper, our shoulders drop. There's just a sense of ease that can um, be felt. Well, when we've had trauma in our life, trauma actually puts a whole different set of glasses on us, our perception. So when our sensory organs are going to check and see whether it's safe or not, when we've had trauma in our life, it messes with that system, with our, our organs actually perceived differently. And so when we perceive a threat, when we've had trauma, it can be our perception of a threat. It might not be real in the moment, but it feels as if it's real. And so it changes the way we perceive and the way we hear, and the way we sense our environment. So in order to be able to really 
since whether it's safe or not, we need to be able to first accurately assess whether there is truly a risk. And the second thing we need to be able to do is when it truly is safe, then we need to be able to modulate or inhibit our primitive system that is going to go into defensive reactions, commonly known as the fight, flight, or freeze. Um, and that, that really can be a tricky slope when we haven't been able to notice that we're responding or we're reacting and it really is safe. When we can begin to journey down that path, to notice when we believe it's not safe and then discover well, what really was safe and not feel ashamed about that or be judged for that, then the part of us that experienced the trauma can begin to heal. And that's really important. So that neuroception of safety, that really supports healing to happen, makes it possible. I've, I've talked before, and you may have heard it, around my experience getting to be in a group setting and getting triggered by the body posture and the tone of voice and the squinting eyes and the jutting jaw of a, of a colleague. And I was met afterwards by a dear friend who gave me very lovely somatic empathy. And that really began a new pathway for me. And the more I came back and I, I was willing to allow myself to be met there and to receive that support, the pathway thickens. It, and it got more solid, and I became more and more resilient. And I, so continuing that, I've, I've been on this path for years. And then there can still be an opportunity for your nervous system or your sensory organs to see a new situation and determine that it's a match. It's a match with your past experience, and it can begin that process of taking over in order to protect you from the pain that your body is quite confident is going to happen. So what that happened, that did happen for me once. And what that looked like was, again, I was in a group setting and we were debriefing from having held the space for others to learn. And I was excited about sharing one of the processes that I had held and others were in the room and they were they were listening, they were engaged. And then there was one other person that was in the room and I noticed the posture of this person changed. And it kind of slumped back, sunk down, arms folded, and just this, um, like, not interested, you know, like checking everything else out. And when I saw that, I was able to recognize in the moment that it felt as if there was a, a cold fog that had come into the room and it had just settled down in the whole area. And I could feel my, my skin wanted to like withdraw. And I was fascinated by noticing this. And at the same time, I'm attempting to track my conversation and when I realized that I was starting to tip into a little bit of overwhelm, I did something that I'd practiced before. Practicing when I'm in a place where I feel very heart-centered and very present, I would take my hand and I would go into this posture. And it could be either one of my hands that I would do this with. And I would so I would hold that posture as I would breathe and remember what it's like to be in this place of, of stillness and calm and presence and feeling really energized and stable. So I anchored it in this hand, either one of them. I, the, it was the posture of my hand. It's like my body learned to recognize that when I do this, I'm safe, I'm present, and I can engage. So what I did was, when I noticed that cold fog experience come in, 
And I recognized also the body posture of this other person and the look on this person's face. Then I could start to track that there was a link going back to my past that was telling me that I needed to shut down, I needed to be quiet, I needed to disappear and become invisible so that I would be safe. <laughs> and I also recognized at the same time that I was in a leadership position and that really wasn't gonna be supportive for me. So I did this thing. I did it where nobody could really see that I was doing it. And I silently acknowledged to myself, so this is a little variation on time travel empathy. When you've practiced time traveling to different parts of your life and different times in your life and making empathy guesses for what it was like to be you, that pathway becomes more accessible. Your social engagement system can time travel back to parts that may have fragmented in order to sweep them in and catch them and bring them home. So what I did was I made the hand signal for myself and I also touched my chest just ever so briefly because when there's skin to skin contact, it releases oxytocin, which feels good and it supports me to be present. So what I did was I did the hand position, I touched my chest and I then engaged with this other person. I said, excuse me, I wasn't intending to override you. Is, is there something you were wanting us to hear? And at the same time, when I touched my chest and made the hand motion, I silently acknowledged my inner self, the part of me that had been traumatized, that really shrank back from being in the limelight or being um, the one holding the space in a group. And I reassured this part of myself, it's okay, I'm here. I've got you. We came here for this very opportunity for us to be able to develop our capacity to, to lean in rather than to shrink back, to stay engaged and open and curious about what's happening in this moment in order to lay down that pathway inside and have more, a deeper healing experience. So the places where I used to shrink back and used to get small, or pretend I was anyway, those places, when I notice them now, I do my best to reach out to support them or to reach out and ask for another person to hold that space for me, to receive some empathy around what it's like for me to be me. Hmm. So, have you ever had this experience where you're in a social situation and you were actively engaging and then all of a sudden it just felt unsafe? I would invite you to take your time to be with this part of yourself, to be with this experience that you've had. And to the very first step is to recognize this might be a trauma perception. My body's wisdom, it might be picking up on something that I'm not consciously aware of yet and start to really notice what's in your environment and name it silently to yourself. I see a light, I see, name your friend, I see a chair, I see a door, and when we name what's in our environment, we begin to become more present in the now, which is really helpful. Another thing that you can do is, as you do that, really pay attention to your body. Notice your own body's posture. Notice if your shoulders have rolled in, if your head's dropped down. Just notice, is your back straight? Just notice, is your tummy tight? Are you breathing shallow? What's your heart rate? As you start to track your implicit experience, your body's experience, then this, any parts of you that may have fractured and splintered, they start to feel safer because there's an acknowledgement on a cellular level. And that's really important too. And it's a way to gently begin to invite a new experience in your body. 
and then to be able to welcome this part safely home, being warmly accompanied. We all need accompaniment. In any of those moments in our lives where we were alarmed and alone, those need to be welcomed home. Thanks for being on this journey with me today. Healing you. <laughs>